our turn to do 820 m again this week. So we have three stories for you. Three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. <laughs> and as Jen said a couple of weeks ago, these stories are really special because um, stories in the Bible are real. They're not just made up. And Abigail and I are going to read this one for you, aren't we? Yeah. So you guys can see some of the pictures as well. Um, on E20 on your screen and I'm going to just ask Abigail what is this a big picture of? The world! And what's this a picture of? A on little the town. A little town, yeah. So today's story is all about something that God gave to the world and he sent to a little small town. Okay, you can tell them. It was Jesus! <laughs> it was, it was Jesus, well done. So let's read about it. Very very cool story because it's real. So this is from Luke chapter one and two. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down. Seas would have roared. But the earth held its breath. As silent as falling snow, he came in. And when no one was looking, in the darkness, he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. Joseph was the great, 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 great grandson of King David. One morning, the girl was minding her own business when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared right there in her bedroom. He was Gabriel and he was an angel and he was a special messenger from heaven. When she saw the tall shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. You don't need to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see if perhaps he was talking to somebody else. Mary, Gabriel said, and he laughed with such gladness that Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you're going to have a baby, a little boy. You will call him Jesus. He is God's own son. He's the one, he's the rescuer. The God who flung planets into space and kept them whirling around and around. The God who made the universe with just a word. The one who could do anything at all was making himself small and coming down as a baby. Wait, God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said, and felt her heart beating hard. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God? Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see, and she believed. I am God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full, every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them, there isn't a place for you. Where would they stay? Soon Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old tumble down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And the sheep. And the sheep. Where's your horse? Have you got it there? No, I don't. Okay, that's fine. And there in the stable, amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. <laughs> One of these, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us because, of course, he had. 
Now we're going to read our second story. And our second story is about this man here who has a big shaggy beard and eats locusts and Disgusting. honey. Yes. And maybe you already know who that character is. Abigail wants to tell you. Okay, go for it. John. John! Yes. He was John the Baptist and um, we're going to read about him now. So this story is from Matthew chapter 3. About the same time Jesus was born, another baby was born. His name was John and God had a really special job for him. John was going to get everyone ready for Jesus. The day John was born, his, his dad knew God's promise to Abraham was coming true. God was sending the rescuer and he was so happy he sang a song. And these were the words of a song. Because God loves us with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love, heaven is breaking through. He is sending us a light from heaven to shine on us like the sun, to shine on those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So John grew up and well, to tell you the truth, he was a bit unusual. He lived in the desert. He wore itchy, scratchy outfits made of camel hair. He had a big, big, bushy beard and long, long, scraggly hair. And here is the oddest thing of all. He only ate locusts, Whoa. short for big, creepy, crunchy grasshoppers, Whoa. which he dipped in honey Whoa. to disguise the taste, probably. But honey is nice. Honey is nice, yeah. But God sent John to tell his people something important. Stop running away from God and run to him instead, John said. You need to be rescued. I have good news. The rescuer is coming. Make your hearts ready for him. Yes, get ready because your king is coming back for you. Great crowds listened to John. They were sorry they had sinned. They wanted to stop running away from God. They wanted to be rescued. So John baptized them, which means he plunged them in and out of the water. It showed that they wanted to follow God and begin a new life. One day, John was baptizing people in the Jordan River as usual. When he looked up and saw a man walking down to the water's edge, John spoke, God spoke quietly to John. This is the one. John's heart leapt. This was the moment he'd been waiting for his whole life. Look, John said, as Jesus came down to the water. But his voice came out as a whisper. He couldn't make it any louder. It was all he could do to even speak. The Lamb of God, God's best Lamb who takes away the sins of the whole world. Will you baptize me too? Jesus asked. Who am I, John said, to baptize you? <coughs> it's what God wants me to do, Jesus said. So John baptized Jesus. Suddenly, it was as if someone had drawn back the curtains in a dark room, as if heaven itself had opened, because a beautiful light broke through the clouds and shone down onto Jesus bathing him in gold. Beads of water glittered and sparkled like tiny diamonds in his hair. A white dove flew down and gently rested on Jesus. And a voice came from heaven. It was clear and strong and loud so everyone could hear. This is my own son and I love him. I'm very pleased with him, God said. Listen to him. Heaven had broken through the great rescue had begun. And this is our third and final story. And it's from Matthew chapter four. Matthew chapter four. Let's go. This one is called, Let's go. <laughs> After Jesus was baptized, he went straight out into the desert. That might seem like an odd place to go because as you know, deserts are very hot and there isn't any food or water or places to stay. But Jesus needed to get away by himself and he went somewhere quiet and lonely. He needed to be with his heavenly father to get ready for his new life. In the desert, Jesus thought about the secret rescue plan he had made with God. Before the foundation of the world, 
they both knew what would have to happen. To rescue God's children, Jesus would have to die. There was no other way. It was the reason he had come. Now the, the old enemy, the one who had spoken through the snake to Adam and Eve back in the garden, remember him? He didn't want Jesus to rescue God's people. So he lied to Jesus. Are you really God's own son? He whispered. Poor you. God must not love you. You don't need to die. Do it my way. Yes, and no, Jesus said to the liar. I will do what God says. And from that moment on, nothing would ever be the same. Jesus wasn't like Adam. Jesus was a new kind of man. He would not believe the terrible lie that the enemy spoke. Jesus knew God loved him and he would trust God no matter what. It was just as God had promised to Adam and Eve all those years before. Jesus had come to do battle against the snake's work. He would get rid of the sin and the darkness and the tears and he would suffer, but he would win. Jesus left the desert and set about the great rescue. He was going to get God's people back, but first he needed to find some helpers and friends. He had a lot to do. He would need some people to help him. Who would make good helpers, do you think? Who would be a good team? Clever people? No. Uh, rich people? No. Strong, important people? No. Well, some people might think so, but I'm sure by now you don't need me to tell you that they'd be wrong because the people God uses don't have to know a lot of things or have a lot of things. They just have to need him a lot. One day Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw some brothers and friends mending their nets. They were poor fishermen. Jesus called out to them, let's go. Peter, Andrew, James and John looked up at this man on the shore and they couldn't explain it. Their boats needed to be put away, their nets needed mending. Fish were still wriggling on the shore, but something about this stranger made them just drop their nets and leave their fish and leave their boats and everything and follow him. This God man was like no one they'd ever met. When they looked at Jesus, their hearts filled up with a wonderful forever sort of happiness. And inside it was as if they were running free in an open field. They were so happy. Jesus asked 12 men to be his helpers. Peter, Andrew, James and John, Matthew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, another James, Simon, Thaddeus and Judas. Meeting Jesus would change all of them forever. And that is the end of our story. And I hope you enjoy it, boys and girls. Bye! <laughs> Bye! God, you made our big blue sky. You made the oceans deep and wide. God, you made You made
may the trees so 